Hello? Hello? It's your nickel. Start talking. Who? Will Hayes. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Hayes? This is Eddie Cantor. In the flesh. Well, say, why should I lie? What? Oh, I see. In all the theaters in the United States and Canada. Oh, yes. You want me to tell... To tell the... Yes, yes. Well, wait a minute. There are some people in the theater now. Do you mind if I tell them? I'll call you back. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, I just had a telephone call from Mr. Will Hayes. He asked me to talk to you on a matter of great importance. Of course, it would be easier for me to tell you some jokes or scandal about Hollywood or sing a song or maybe show you my operation. But after all, there does come a time in the life of even a comedian when he must become serious. And I want to appeal to you. In the very near future, at this theater, there's going to be a benefit performance held for the unemployed of this city. And we ask you to please patronize this performance. Buy tickets, not only for yourself, but for your friends. There will be no donations. At that night, there will be no solicitation for funds. The minute you've bought your tickets, you will have done your duty. And ladies and gentlemen, we simply must take care of the unemployed. If we don't do it, what is to become of them? And so, I say to you once again, please, please buy tickets for this performance Tell your friends, bring your family, and do what you can to help the people who are less fortunate than we are. God bless you. Kingdom hearts are bold, that's just the place for us. Forever to roam a mountain high to hear the call of the wild. Away from all the city noises, happy as a child. Give us a mountain trail, lakes and trees, land of the grizzly bear. Give us this land of God, nature best, Canada mountains so fair. Give us a mountain trail, lakes and trees, land of the grizzly bear. Give us this land of God, nature best, Canada mountains so fair. praise of the city with their gold and their life of ease. But give me a trail through the Rockies among the peaks and lakes and trees. You can have your city penthouse and your autos and all the rest. But just give me a saddle cayuse on a trail in the great Northwest. We'll turn our backs on the railroad tracks in the mountains beyond the plains and the city's past we'll forget at last out west. Out west, where the north begins, we'll rest there by courage wind. I'll roam with my pack on the world to turn my back. All on over the trail, beside me, my mountain maid, who'll guide me and never afraid. My own primitive child heeding the grain. So, Mr. Donnelly, you only explore places in America. That's right. I'm an American explorer. Why won't you go to a foreign country? Because I think that's carrying a joke too far. <laughs> the scenery of the old world is very beautiful, and the people are very quaint. Yes, the scenery in America is just as pretty, and the people are just as funny. I approve it. How? Come with me, and we will explore a typical American city. This is Washington, D.C. D.C. now stands for Domestic Confidence. Washington is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It is named after a man who never told a lie. 
Now it's filled with men who seldom tell the truth. Washington was laid out by a commission of four in 1791. It's been laid out by the rest of the country ever since. How many of you know that Washington has a city hall? Well, it's true. It's here in the municipal building. And this is Congresswoman Mary Norton of New Jersey, the unofficial mayor of Washington, D.C. You are now looking at the United States Treasury. You can get as near the Treasury as you want, but you can't touch it. Not unless you belong to a foreign nation. A statue of Alexander Hamilton, our first treasurer and financial expert. There are very few statues of financial experts. Most of them are just busts. Who says things are tough? Why, Uncle Sam has money to burn. These Treasury employees are destroying more than a million dollars just because the money is too dirty. Don't you hate the filthy stuff? George Washington's last headquarters. Here he drafted the plans for the historic inland waterway, the famous Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. This was the last place Washington slept in the capital city. <laughs> now the best known sleeping place is the Andy Saloon League. But how different are the headquarters of the present president, the White House? Although it's in the red, it's not as black as it's painted. Inside is the famous red room and the equally well-known blue room. The president's study, the chief executive's bedroom. Sitting in the White House is the most colorful man in the country, the red, white, and blue leader of the New Deal, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This young fellow is telling the youth of America they've all got a chance to land in the White House if they're not too careful. Most of the big fellows in Washington are cagey, but not these little fellows. They can look at the biggest of them and say, oh, nuts. Here is one of the White House landmarks, Steve the Greek peanut vendor. Hello, Steve, how is the peanut business cracking for you? Are you see? I say, how is business? Liston sport, business he's always going to be for good. As long as we gotten these White Houses, that great man, President and Rosenfeld. <laughs> so long, Steve. Goodbye, sport. This is the home of Francis Scott Key, the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Mr. Key sat down and wrote a song that makes us all stand up. Here you see the new patent office. The patent ran out on the old one. A group of inventors. The poor guys were tired of hanging around home, so they invented ideas to get them to Washington. But here is a fellow with a great idea, and he swears it will work. It's a new kind of telescope that will get Kate Smith's moon over the mountain. You are now looking at the Lincoln Memorial, a great tribute by a great nation to a great president. It is an inspiring symbol to make us worthy of the memory of the man who belongs to the ages. There sits Honest Abe, watching. If he could speak, he would say, Franklin, my friend, with your cooperation, the government of the people by the people and for the people shall have a new birth of freedom. This is the original site of Ford's Theater, where on the night of April 14, 1865, Abraham Lincoln was shot. The Patterson House in which Lincoln died is directly across the street. The bed on which the martyred president expired. The old gentleman seated at the side of the bed is Colonel Lewis G. Reynolds, who, when a boy, sat on Lincoln's lap. He has devoted his life to perpetuate the memory of the great emancipator. The smallest residence in Washington. The erecting of this tiny structure only 11 feet wide was a great feat, and great feet have entered here, but not the feet of Canero or Garbo. In this house lived Dolly Madison, the charming wife of James Madison, fourth president of the United States. Dolly Madison was the first woman to run the White House. As a hostess, Dolly was a hundred years ahead of the times. She was noted for her chicken dinners. To the visitors from the north, she gave the neck and breast of the chicken. To those from the west, the right side. And those from the east, the left side. She wasn't very popular in the south. This building would make an ideal home for the politicians, the Lemon Building. The Smithsonian Institute, 
that was founded for scientific research by James Smithson, an Englishman. All the relics that aren't in politics are to be found in here. The head of a radio comedian showing you the effects of his decayed jokes. St. John's Church, known as the Church of the Presidents. Most every president from Madison to Theodore Roosevelt worshiped here. The Congressional Library. Here are kept many valuable books and some not so valuable. For instance, the Congressional Records. It cost the taxpayers about $50 a page to print these books. That's a Congressional Record. Well, there's a group inside working out an important problem. Let's watch them. After working for hours, they've just discovered that a three-lettered word for ostrich is E-M-U, smart men. Here it is, folks, the NRA building, where they practice what they preach. Their code is to quit on the dot of five. And boy, how 